I'm Dan Ryan, COO of Surf One. We've been working on board-mounted sensor data for surfing for about five years now. And uh, we found out uh, quite a bit during this time. It's been a really interesting journey. Sensor data in surfing has actually been pretty challenging. There's a few different companies that have tried to kind of make it happen, and it hasn't really come to fruition yet. But today I'll talk about kind of what we've been seeing, how surfing is kind of transitioning and seeing its own data revolution. Yeah. So data and sports started back in the 80s. Uh, auto racing was the first to develop it. Formula One really picked up on it. And then we've seen it kind of trickle down into professional sports as time's gone on. So you're seeing you know, all the major league sports. And then you're also seeing it in a lot of the Olympic events that uh, I don't have listed out here because there's way too many of them. Now, there's a lot of studies being done on how data is pr improving sports, how data is being used to improve athletic performance, improve spectator engagement, and so forth. Uh, you can find them on the internet. We've got a lot of them listed out here. But I want to talk about why we need data in surfing. So as you get into the judging of different sports, you have this balance between subjectivity, so style, uh, you know, an athlete's flair, capabilities, and then objectivity, which is really going down to, you know, what are the met metrics? How are you judging this sport? How is it being calculated? Uh, for racing, it's going to be speed, acceleration. For uh, basketball, it's going to be points. And where are they shooting the ball from? How, are they, how many points are they racking up? And you can get into more granular data. Now, when you get into surfing, this looks a little bit more like this. We're talking a lot of subjectivity, a lot of focus on style, and you're not seeing much in the way of objectivity in regards to how things are being tracked. Each judge might have a different approach to judging a surfer and so forth. So this is not exactly the most healthy way for a sport to continue to grow. And as we get through this, you're seeing things in the world in regards to how statements are made about surfing uh, and also in the judging itself. So one of my favorites was this one. This came out about three years ago. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg claims to have ridden 15-foot waves. Now, not to put Zuck down, but uh, the comment section was pretty interesting, to say the least. You know, <laughs> there were about 900 comments all along this line of thinking where there's no way that this guy could have actually done it. He doesn't ride 15-foot waves. It's not possible. And there's no objectivity here. Nobody could actually verify or deny that Mark Zuckerberg was able to ride 15-foot waves. We're also seeing this in WSL judging controversies. So as you see here, so what this is, this is the uh, comments on the 2023 championship at the Kelly Slater Surf Ranch. And you're seeing a spike in mentions of judges, score, shame, robbed, underscored, overscored, ridiculous. Things didn't go very well. And it's because nobody could actually verify what the judges were basing their judgments off. So now we get into what is surfing data. And we're starting to finally see technology being used in surfing to actually track a surfer's performance. What we've started to see at the beginning has really been focused around things like fitness trackers. So you have things like the Apple Watch and other devices where they're tracking things like wave count, wave time, max speed, distance surf, etc. And that's really good. It's a huge step in the right direction. But it's limited because you can't really base a surfer's actual technique and capability off of these metrics. You can base you know, how much exercise they're getting off of these metrics. So this is where we start getting into what we look at as the next level of surfing, where we're talking about inboard mounted sensors. It looks a little bit like this. In fact, this is one of our production models. So feel free to pass this around if you'd like to see it. You can take out the little glowing thing. That's what the sensor looks like. It's about the size of a few quarters put together and then connected to a mobile application that allows you to upload that data and actually append it to surfing videos. And this is what we're measuring. So these are some of our data overlays and this is uh, you know, kind of the core of what we're focusing on right off the bat, speed, power, flow. Now getting into the actual utilization of this, this is where we can st start seeing what's happening when a surfer is on a wave on a second by second basis. So here you'll see that top turn, he's exerting 2.44 Gs of force. He's going about 20.73 miles per hour. 
and then there's a few other metrics on here. And then this is another version of this, where you're seeing exactly what's happening as the surfer's making the movements, and you're seeing how that's translated to the board itself. Now I'm gonna, for the sake of time, I'm gonna breeze through some of these, but essentially what you're able to track is all of the different angles of the board, where that force is exerted, the top speed, and the speed on a second-by-second -second basis. And then we're also getting into other things where we'll be releasing a flow measurement that's basically going to be looking at how the surfer is executing maneuvers and how much speed is lost or gained after that maneuver. Uh, also, rail-to-rail -rail movements. And what this ends, what the end result is, a video that can be overlaid with data that's going to show you exactly what's happening and a surfer can pause these movements for training purposes, but you can also look at this from the standpoint of, in, for example, surf parks, spectator engagement. You're actually able to identify with what's happening on there. You're able to put numbers to the surfing, and I'm gonna play that one more time just so you can see it. And then you're also able to start benchmarking because with this technology, you can actually see not just the speed of the waves, but the average speed of surfers on your wave. You can see how stable surfers are as they're riding the waves, and you can start extrapolating uh, standards, averages over time. So let's get into why is this important, because this, is, I think, is really the meat of it. One of the most important things about this is feedback loops. When people are out surfing, they're having fun. But if they're surfing the same wave over and over again, that fun might start to drop down a little bit because they're not, under, they're not able to have different experiences. And most importantly, they're not able to necessarily understand exactly what is making them better. So I want to step away from surfing for a second, just a moment, and get into the world of video games. Now, this is becoming more and more relevant because we're seeing gamification in reality pretty much everywhere. And the nice thing about video games is when you end a round, you have scoreboards. You have an understanding of exactly what you did. If you're competing against friends, you have an understanding of what they did, and then who was doing a better job. And this is interesting because gaming has exploded in the past 10, 20 years, and you're seeing massive amounts of, uh, massive amounts of revenue being driven in by different video games. And you're seeing even more revenue being driven in by multiplayer games. So when you can gamify the experience and have people compete against each other, engage with each other, that gives you a whole different paradigm. And esports is one of those areas where I think we're seeing that a lot. So uh, I thought this was relevant, because this is League of Legends. League of Legends is the most successful game by Riot Games. And for those of you who know the WSL, the current CEO of the WSL was we have chief of marketing at Riot Games and helped engage and start a lot of these uh, esports competitions. Now what you're seeing here is a stadium filled with people there to play video games and also just watch video games. And the reason is because they're able to see, they're able to understand exactly what's happening. Every single video game, every single round is going to give you a scoreboard. And that's where we get into the concept of gamifying reality. We talk a lot about other, you know, players in the space, not the surfing space necessarily, but just the recreation space, and what they've been doing in regards to you know, getting virality. So I'm going to start with a few of these. You're probably familiar with Peloton. They actually managed to make treadmills cool and get people engaged in treadmills again. So 6.3 million active members, 3.03 million subscribers, and a lot of that is not because they have a better treadmill, it's because of the network that they've created around it and how they have scoreboards, how you can get on the treadmill or the bike in your basement, start pedaling, and then you can see how you're comparing to other people. Same with Strava. You have 120 million users, and these are people getting on their bikes, going around, and again, scoreboards, ranks, name, date, pace, heart rate. Uh, basically, you're competing against other people, but instead of just competing against yourself, and you're able to see those metrics. Now let's get into something that's a little bit more familiar uh, with the kind of surf park space where you're looking at a, somebody going to a specific location and actually competing or playing in uh, a recreational activity. So you've got K1 Speed. 
Now, one of the things about K1 speed, despite it being very different from surfing, is the fact that after every single race, you get a scorecard. And this is both engaging for the end user, the person who's actually doing the racing, as well as the spectators and the people that you're competing against. When there's downtime between a race, you have the ability to go and compare scorecards, see who was faster, and so forth. You're also seeing this kind of paradigm in Top Golf, where you have the gamification of the game of golf. Now, this was really interesting because Callaway bought Top Golf a few years back, and 40% of Callaway's revenue is now coming through Top Golf. And it's because of the gamification of the game of golf and making it simpler, making it understandable to people who want to go out there and just hit a ball, see how far they can get. Now let's talk about how this impacts surf parks. Data opens doors, and there's really four doors that I'm focusing on today. So we've got targeted scale improvement, spectator engagement, park-to-park -park benchmarking, and competition enablement, which is probably my favorite. So we'll get into this. And of course, with skill improvement, when you have data, tied into the surfboard itself, when you're able to see exactly what your movements are and uh, basically how they're impacting the flow of that board across the water, you're going to be able to engage in individual training. You'll be able to train yourself. You're going to be able to look at those videos and see if you moved your arm too much, how that affected your balance. That's also going to lead to enhanced coaching because now the coach has something more than just a video or just a visual cue to go off of. That's also going to lead to peer benchmarking because now you can go out there with your friends or maybe a group of peers that are trying to get better at surfing and they can start comparing you know, their top speed, how stable they are, who's favoring one rail versus another, and so forth. And then, of course, get, that leads into deeper insights. Now, when we talk about the data, so I'm bringing this up again, this is the potential of what can be extracted from this data. So you have about six different areas of data that you can look into and about 12 different data points that you can focus on. And you can focus on this from the standpoint of training. You can stand, focus on this from the standpoint of a peer engagement, spectator engagement, and then, of course, competition, which I'll get to next. The other nice thing about this, and we've had a few conversations with uh, some of the surf park owners here and developers here, is that Again, going back to the concept of benchmarking your parks, understanding the wave, you can measure how fast that wave moves. You can measure how many volume or how many gallons of water, the volume that's being pushed through that wave. But how are you measuring the actual surface performance on a wave by wave basis? How are you measuring the difference between these different surf park models, these different design styles? And that's what this can enable. Because as you get more and more data, you're going to be able to start seeing averages, benchmarks, of how fast people are able to go, how hard they're able to turn, and then, of course, some of these other ones as well. And this is where it gets really exciting. So have got a few minutes left. Going back to this concept of gamifying reality, multiplayer games are really exciting to people. People are spending more money on it. They're spending more time on it. And I think that we can actually take this concept of surf parks and turn this into a giant, basically, augmented reality game. So this is how we're looking at it. With every sensor, you have session data that's coming up. With that session data, that's correlating back to locations. And that can also correlate back to leaderboards. So this is what we're doing as we're building out our kind of network of surf parks as well as individual users that are engaging with these sensors, they're putting them on their boards. We're not just taking this from the standpoint of how can you use this to train or how can you use this to get better, but really how can you have a massive global asynchronous competition where everybody's out there going out surfing and then they're putting their name on their data, they're entering into a leaderboard, and you're able to see you know, how a user's performing, how people are performing at that location, and have an overarching competition for that specific location. And then it gets into multiple locations. And in this case, you can have things like multi-park competitions, where if you're partnering with different parks in the area, or if you want to have a global tour of surf park, um, like a global tour surf park championship, this is where we have individual users that are all submitting their data to different locations. And then that data is being pulled into an overarching season. So you can actually compare, see who's better. And this gives us 
the common person, a way to train against pros. So for example, uh, one of our sponsored riders is Carlos Munoz. He goes out there with the sensor. He goes to T Street, he goes to La Jolla, he goes to Black's Beach, and his data's coming in. And now you can actually compete and see how you do against Carlos Munoz because you have that data in the same place and you're able to see the variation between what he's doing and what you're doing. And then with the addition of video and data overlaid on the video, you can kind of complete that loop and get the context of it. So I'd like to just kind of leave you with some what if questions. You know, what if you could take every session at a surf park and make that a king of the hill competition for corporate events, for friends challenging each other? You know, what if you could take the data that's coming off of surfboards and actually use that to identify exactly what's happening with your uh, surf park and how that wave is interacting with the people. So uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to address them and uh, happy to have any conversations after the fact as well. Thank you. How many users do you have? So right now we're in the kind of a beta stage. So we have been ramping up with different users. We focus a lot on some of the professionals and amateurs in the space. Um, Carlos Munoz is one. We've also worked with Matt Archibald and then also uh, had a few other testers. So. We sponsor the Western Surfing Association. So one of the sponsors there. So we send the kids out. You know, those are generally competitors, 18 fans. So we, we work with a lot of those guys. And uh, but yeah, like, it, it's been beta testing uh, up until probably this last uh, 90 days or so. And now we're getting out there with uh, the product. After what about? example, you, you want to see it on the surf park. What about the, the, the private data? It's okay to use it to compare it with other, because I'm, I'm thinking if I, I don't know, I have a question that being asked to, to some of the users, and then I want to see if that information goes to that I don't use it, or I don't know the So that's, that's really coming down to end user agreements. So we're looking at different ways that we can set this up where you can have, uh, you know, we're also looking at different user tiers where you have kind of the base level. Maybe some people just want to use it for private coaching. Then there's also kind of a next level up where you get into like the competition level. And in competition, you know, that data has to be shared. Um, so it really just depends on the user tiers and how we're setting that up. But yeah, we could also work with you on specific like surf park by surf park arrangements if you're doing in-house sensors. And then that's a whole different situation where you know you would own the data, you would own the sensors, and then that could be leveraged how you would. That's really interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Congrats.